So what we're going to have a look at in this video is a way of improving calendars in InDesign. And we've probably done calendars in the past at some point, some of us more than others. And it can be a bit of a tedious process, especially if you need to do multiple calendars on each page, like this example here. You'd have to lay out the calendars, put the tables in there. You've then got to make sure you get the dates into the right week of the year, etc. And it can take a bit of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at creating a script to do that. Now, don't panic. You don't need to write in JavaScript or any script of any kind. We're actually going to use an AI engine to do that for us. And I'm going to show you how you can write that, implement the script, and style it up. We'll use table styles for the styling. So for example here, you'd be able to click on the month of April, run your script, and it pops up with a nice little box asking which month it is. So it's the fourth month of 2025 in this case. Click OK. It then has another nice little box asking you which table style you'd like to use. So I'll use these table styles I created earlier. Click OK, and you now have a calendar for April. And if I want to do May, I can just select May. Do exactly the same for May. It's the fifth month, and I'll use the same style. And there's May. And you can see the dates are in the different, they're under the right days of the week for each month, etc. And you can style out however you want. You can change the colors, the fonts, etc. in the table styles to look exactly how you want them to look. So we're going to have a look at doing all this and teach you how to do that using no code whatsoever. So one of the hot topics that we hear a lot about at the moment is AI. And there's a lot of debate around whether it will replace jobs, whether it will simply enhance workers and make them more productive. I think my take on it, certainly in the in the kind of near term, is it'll be the latter. I think it'll make people a lot more productive. Whether it'll have a different impact over the longer term is another question. But I think certainly short to medium term, it'll make people a lot more productive. And what I wanted to have a look at today is one way that it can be used for InDesign users to, to make them more productive. I've got a quite specific scenario here. So this is a calendar. It's, a, it's designing, effectively simulating the design of something like a brochure or magazine where you have multiple calendars in there. And laying out those calendars typically will be quite a long kind of time-consuming process, a little bit laborious. And I wanted to show you how you could actually use AI to make that process a little easier. Now, we're not going to use just InDesign. We're going to use InDesign in conjunction with ChatGPT. And what we're going to do is use InDesign scripts. So scripts in InDesign are bits of JavaScript, and you can get them in the window menu if you go down here to Utilities and open up scripts. Now, there's probably a few people out there panicking at that point, thinking, no, I don't write JavaScript. I don't want to go there. And the beauty of this is you don't have to write any JavaScript. You're going to get the AI engine to write the JavaScript for you all you need to be able to do basically is copy and paste and, and ask a few kind of reasonably sensible questions. So I'll show you how. So the example I'm going to use here is this calendar script. Now we're not um, going to, I went to the AI engine as we can see here, and this is chat GPT and I've just got a plus subscription. So top of my head, you're looking at around kind of 20 pound a month, something like that. So it's not massively expensive. You can do some of this on the free subscription as well, so you don't necessarily need to pay for it. Try it on the free subscription too. And the question I asked Indies at the top there is, write a script for InDesign to generate a standard calendar on a page. So he's done that. He's replied with his simple and effective InDesign script using JavaScript or Extend Script, um, create a standard monthly calendar on a page. And it then gives me the script. If I click on that, you can see it kind of pops up and opens up the script there, and you can see it. So what I did was I copied that script out from there. I'll just close that for a minute and, and put it back. Um, copied that script out from there and went over to Notepad. And in Notepad, which is here, you can then open a new document, so File New, and paste the script in. Now, when you paste the script in, in Notepad, it saves it as a text document by default. So what you will need to just do is go into something like Windows Explorer, just change the file extension from text to JSX, which is a JavaScript file. And you can see here, if I go to File and Open, we can go back into where those JavaScript files are. They're all in this folder here, and it doesn't show me them. Now, it doesn't show me them because I'm only searching for text documents, and I have changed the file extension already. So if I click in there and go to All Files, you can see it now shows all my JSX files in there as well. So if I just open that first one, now, That's we're not really clear when I'd copied and pasted it into there and just saved it. Now, if you're unsure where to find this folder to save them into, there's a nice little trick for finding that back over in InDesign. In InDesign, where it says user there, so in this scripts panel, 
go down into the user section. If you right click on that, there is an option there to reveal in Explorer. If you do that, it literally opens Windows Explorer and takes you straight to that folder where you need to save these. And all you need to do is save these files in there as a JSX file, and they will automatically appear in this list. So you'll come back to Windows and see them refreshed in the list. Now, you can see I've got a few versions of this one. I've got version 1, version 2, 3, 4, and 5. And that's because I wanted to make it a little bit cleverer with each version. Now, if we have a look at version 1 I did and click on it, when I double-click calendar script v1, I've just double-clicked on it, and it doesn't seem to have done very much. In fact, it doesn't seem to have done anything. Now, at first, I thought when I did this that it hadn't actually worked at all. But then I realized if I actually scrolled up, it had done something. What it had done is it had put a massive text frame on my first page here and put the calendar in there, and you can see it here. And it's pretty horrible. It's not laid out very well. It doesn't fit into the page. Um, it's a pretty kind of bad example. So I'm just going to undo that. A couple of steps. There we go. Um, that obviously didn't work for obvious reasons. So what I then did at that point was I went back over to ChatGPT in here. Um, initially, I got an error, actually. So um, I uploaded the error and said, I get this error, and it then fixed the error. So that was just a line that needed changing in my script. So I literally just kind of took out that line and replaced it with this line. Then I went back to ChatGPT and said, can you now tweak this? So it places the calendar into the current selected frame, and scales the rows and columns to fit inside the frame dimensions. So I'm basically asking ChatGPT to fix the things that I don't like about it. Now, when you're doing this live, what it does is ChatGPT would then give you that answer and say, I've updated the script, and it would show you it there on the screen. Here, what it's doing is it's abbreviating this conversation thread a little bit. So at the end, we'll see the final script, but it's kind of hidden where a few of the other scripts in the middle. But normally what you'd see there is you'd see a panel very much like this first one here where you can click on, it would show you that script there. So I got it to tweak it, and this is where it came up with the second script. So the second script, if we just go back onto InDesign, if I click on that same box here, and then I'll go back to my scripts here, so open up the scripts panel, and try calendar script two. So good news, we can see it's now putting a calendar in there. There is a little bit of a overset text issue going on there and that's because it seems to be putting in a blank row at the end but we're not going to worry about that too much you can easily remove a row because what it's doing is it's putting these in as InDesign tables so easily enough to, e to edit in there but there's a, a slightly bigger issue the bigger issue is at the top here it says April 2025 this isn't the calendar for April 2025 what it's effectively doing is it's giving me the calendar for the current month that I happen to be in which is at, at this time of me recording this is June so that's the calendar for June 2025, not April 2025. That's going to be an issue for me. As you can see here, I've got to do calendars for April, May, June, July, and I'm going to have other pages carrying on, maybe going over a few years. So that's a bit of a problem for me. So how do I fix that? Well, the fix for that one was go back to ChatGPT. And what I said next was, is it possible to tweak this so that when the script is run, an InDesign dialog box is opened asking the user to confirm what month and year the calendar is for? And ChatGPT edited the script, and it gave me a little button here where I could see the new script and copy the new script. Now, when I've copied these scripts and pasted them, each time I've done it, I've put it into a new text file and just changed the extension to JSX. So that's why when you go back over to InDesign, you see in them all in there, there's version 1, version 2, version 3. So I wanted to kind of show how, how it had progressed as I've done this. So if we undo this calendar, right? let me just go back to where there's no calendar there. Now, we're not really going to let me do it here in a second. Let just get out here. Well, let me just delete this. Reduce this blank text frame here. Now, we're not really up here. So if I select this text frame now and we run calendar script 3 and just double-click that one, can you see now it's popping up a little dialog box here and it's saying calendar settings and it's asking me to enter the month and the year. Now you could you could put labels on there to say what they are, etc. I haven't gone to the trouble of doing that. It's only for me to use. So on this one, this is for April. So April is the fourth month of 2025. So that's the year I want. And I'll click OK. And you can see that's now done it for the fourth month. Um, whereas if I click on the May one, double click that, May being the fifth month of 2025, and click OK. Can you see the numbers are different? So Sunday the 6th in April, whereas it's Sunday the 4th in May. 
So it literally is kind of picking up these um, these correct months and years and putting in the right dates there. So we're doing fairly well here. I'm just going to, uh, rather than control Z in multiple times again, we'll just reproduce the text frame a couple of times there. So that's, that's looking quite good. But what I'm not too keen on at the moment still is things like the styling of that. It, it looks a bit bland. It's a, a standard kind of table, which I guess is fair enough because I haven't asked it to do anything else. Um, but what I wanted to do was style it. So back over in InDesign, what I did was I created some table styles. So table styles can contain cell styles. Cell styles can contain paragraph styles. So I set those all up so I had some default table styles to make my tables look a particular way and match my brand. And then what I said was, one final change. Once the calendar's created, can you get InDesign to automatically apply a table style to it by presenting the user with a small dialogue box? containing a drop-down in which they can choose an InDesign table style from the list of table styles available for the document. So this was version 4 of my script. So back over in InDesign, if I select the April one and I run version 4, I get my first little pop-up box asking me which month. Well, it's April, so it's the fourth month of 2025. But this time, when I click OK, I now get a second little pop-up box asking me to choose a table style. So I'm going to go in there and choose my calendar styles, which I've created in InDesign. That's just a standard table style, cell style, etc. that I created over in InDesign and set up already in InDesign. Now, you could set those as defaults quite easily in InDesign as well. It's not difficult to do. Um, and it's one of the things that I do tend to cover on my advanced InDesign courses. So if I go into there, click on the calendar styles, and then click OK, you can see now it's actually giving it some styling. Now, the styling isn't quite what I was going for. And the reason the styling isn't quite what I was going for, it's not far off, but it's not quite right, is because those headers across the top with the day of the week in there, they were supposed to be a different color and a different style. And it hasn't done that because what it hasn't done is it hasn't created a header row. It's put the table in there, but there's no header or footer rows in there. There's literally just a table full of, of standard kind of body cells. So I'm sure you can guess what's coming next. I went back to ChatGPT again. And in ChatGPT, I said, sorry, one last week. Can you adjust the script to convert the first row in the calendar to a header row automatically? Now, this. we're not ready to script it then, gave me. And it's updated it to do that. So again, I copied the script, pasted it into a little notepad text file, saved it. Um, in this case, I saved it. Then a second. There we go. Um, in this case, I saved it as calendar script v5.jsx was the file extension in that same folder, so it shows up here. So now, when I click on that box, double-click v5, choose May 2025, and click OK. My table style is my calendar styles. Click OK. And you can see it's now giving me the little header to format the header rows, and I could quickly go through a lot of documents and say, right, the next one, this one is going to be June 2025. Click OK. This one is going to be July. Click OK. Now, don't forget, I could have multiple different calendar styles as well if I wanted. I don't have to stick with one. You can you can have a little drop down there to pick from as many as you want. And it's going through and it's putting all these calendars in here for me as quickly as I like. And they're all set up with the right days in the right columns, etc. Um, one thing I didn't bother to fix worth just mentioning, but I, you know, it would probably be quite an easy fix, is it has actually dropped a couple of extra rows in there at the end. So there's a couple of blank rows in there, and you can go in there and in the table menu, delete rows and get rid of them. And it's doing that on each one of the moments. And to be perfectly honest, I just haven't bothered to go back through and tweak the script to stop it doing that. But you could probably do that quite easily in ChatGPT. So hopefully... That gives you a nice little idea if you do need to create any calendars. It's one example of how you could use the scripts panel. Despite not being a programmer and being an InDesign user, you could go use the scripts panel and charge GPT to write your own JavaScript and put it in there and use it to automate things that you maybe do fairly regularly, which are really repetitive. And in some of the other videos that are coming up, I'm hoping to show you a few more things like that as well and, and how you can leverage AI to kind of speed up some of your workflow and make things a little quicker. Um, if you like the video, give it a like online. And if you need any help with InDesign, then have a look at my website, which is www.highlander.co.uk, where you can find both online and live training courses to have a look at. Thanks very much.